Hi everyone, Sanjana here. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing really well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do a lot of study related videos. I talk about career and finance. So if that's something that's of interest to you, then please do subscribe to my channel down below. But as you can tell by the title of today's video, I wanted to share with you my property purchasing experience here in Australia. A lot of you guys would know that I purchased my first investment property in Australia at the age of 25. So I bought it earlier this year in February. So just wanted to take you guys through the property buying process in Australia, what I went through, my experience and a few of my learnings as well. So if you are interested, then please keep watching. So I'm going to firstly start off by giving you guys a few of the reasons as to why I decided to invest in property. So one of the reasons is that I wanted to build my passive income. I wanted an investment portfolio, something that would eventually grow over time and something that would grow on its own and I didn't really have to contribute much towards it. So the reason for this is because I just felt that, you know, relying on one income, given the time that we're in, nothing is certain you could lose your job at any point in time and really nothing is confirmed so i was really intrigued by the idea of having a passive income something that could you know earn me money and something that could just build away on the side without me putting in too much effort and i thought investments or property investments was the best way to do that because at the end of the day i don't want to put all my eggs in one basket i don't want to just have to rely on you know my nine to five job and that salary there in case you know god forbid i lose my job i don't want to be left stranded so I want to build something for myself on the side that I know can potentially you know help me and maybe help me retire a little bit earlier you know um, in my later years so that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to get started in investing and also I thought that you know when you put your money put all your savings into a savings account at a bank literally the interest that you're earning is only like one to two percent which is insane it's, it's so low and you know after doing my research after talking to my buyer's agent which I will mention a little bit later in this video the return on investment properties in Australia um, in fact in regional Australia that's where I've purchased is actually you know between six to eight percent give or take so I thought that was actually insane so I didn't really see the reason or the benefits of putting my money into a bank where the interest rate was really low and wasn't really doing much for my money so I wanted to see quick growth and you know even though it's not quick but I wanted to see um, higher growth and this just seemed the right option for me. I've never been much of a person who's interested in shares or investing um, with stocks and trading like that because I don't know, just too much for me to sort of research and look into and um, I don't really have that much time for that. So yeah, I thought investments was the best thing to do for myself given my current situation and it definitely aligns with my values and goals. So just to give you guys an idea as to how much I had in savings before I jumped into, you know, purchasing a property. So I had about, 30k in savings I thought this was a you know good ballpark figure good you know well-rounded figure for me to um, get into investing and I know 30k doesn't sound like a lot but the types of properties that I was looking at um, or the types of properties that I had been recommended by my buyer's agent were properties that were in regional Australia so I thought you know I didn't want my money just sitting there in a bank account um, not doing anything for me I wanted to use that money I didn't want to wait any longer I wanted to just use it I feel like just building a savings up for extended periods of time um, I feel like it's not the best use and I just wanted my money to be doing something for me um, and just get started ASAP now that's a little bit about why I wanted to start investing into property um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the property acquisition process here in Australia or at least New South Wales um, because that's where I'm from so I'm just going to take you through you know step by step as to what is actually involved if you are looking to purchase your first property stay tuned towards the end because I will be mentioning all of the costs how much I purchased everything for um, all of like the legal conveyancing costs as well so yes yeah, stay tuned for that I'll mention that at the end so the first step in purchasing a property I think it's very important for you to firstly speak to a lender or a broker the reason I say this is because you don't actually know how much you can borrow you don't know how much you can buy and you don't even actually know what properties are out there that you can actually afford so um, I think it's very important to speak to a lender or a broker just to you know get an idea 
as to what is your maximum borrowing capacity? How much can you actually afford? And you know, are you able to even afford the repayments? So the lender will look at your, you know, your serviceability. Um, they'll have a look at all of your expenses, how much income you're generating and what your financial situation is like. So based on all of that information, they will then give you a figure, um, an amount up to what you can actually spend and what you can actually borrow. So this gives you a little bit of an idea as to what types of properties you can purchase and roughly what range there should be between. So the lender or the broker will let you know, you know, what your deposit is. Um, if you're looking for a certain sort of, you know, range um, or property that you're looking to purchase, they'll let you know what your deposit will look like, um, your LMI, which is your lender's mortgage insurance. And then this is usually paid for deposits that are less than 20% of the purchasing price. Now I was fortunate because I didn't actually have to pay for the LMI because I work at a bank and I get the employee discount and that was entirely waived for me. So super, you know, thankful for that. So, you know, your LMI, um, your deposit, and then the stamp duty. Um, I know there's been a few changes with stamp duty in New South Wales. So it's best to speak to your lender or, you know, your buyer's agent. They can give you um, some updated information on that, but I had to pay stamp duty as well. And there's also legal fees involved as well. So that's like your conveyances fees. So those are all of sort of the costs involved and, you know, they'll let you know how much each of this um, with estimated figures actually look like so that you are well prepared. So you don't actually have any, you know, surprises when it comes to actually purchasing your property. Once you've got all of that information and you've got a fair understanding as to, you know, how much your borrowing capacity actually is, then it's time to, you know, look for the property, locate the property. Now, if you're someone like me that doesn't know where to start when it comes to, you know, looking for properties, what to buy, where to look, that kind of thing, then I suggest leaving it up to a buyer's agent. Um, I was really fortunate that I had a buyer's agent on my side as well. He's a good friend of mine. We've actually shot a video before as well on my channel. So if you are interested on that, I will leave it up here or in the description box as well for you in case you're interested. He is also a fellow YouTuber, so be sure to check him out. His YouTube name is Search Property TV. I will leave it in the description box as well in case you are interested. He was a buyer's agent that I went through and I was fortunate because he's a good mate of mine. Um, I was exempt from the buyer's fee, but if you are interested in purchasing a property and you're like me and you don't want to get involved because you don't know where to start, then I definitely recommend, you know, looking into a buyer's agent. They just make it so easy. They do all the research for you. They really keep you informed and, you know, let you know what is best for you financially. Um, there's a bit of a strategy session that happens before you contact um, the buyer's agent that I went with and, you know, they, they sort of of try to work to align to your goals, your values, and really work with you to help and find a property that is, you know, what you are after. So as I mentioned, they do all the research for you. They know what's booming, the locations to look for. The buyer's agent that I obviously went with, Ravi, um, he's very, very keen on, you know, purchasing regional properties. I trusted that and I felt like that was a safe bet for me. I just think it's super logical and super rational to, you know, um, get assistance from people that actually know what they're doing. This isn't, you know, a little amount of money that you're investing in. It's a large amount. So I think, you know, getting someone that's a professional in their field is very important. They can guide you along the way and, and really find properties that align to your goals. That could be either a cash flow positive or, you know, capital growth properties as well. So I think it's just smart to invest in, you know, buyer's agent just to get that peace of mind as well. So once the buyer's agent has, you know, provided you with a property and you have selected it and you both agree on this, then it's time to then go back to your banker or your broker to let them know that, you know, you want to go ahead with, you know, applying for a loan. Now they will then provide you with conditional approval. So conditional approval is a type of preliminary approval, which is basically like a pre-approval from the lender, which indicates that you'll be approved for a home loan up to a certain limit. So yeah, once once you let the banker know, then it usually takes up to a week um, for that conditional approval to come through, depending on which bank you go with. Um, and then in that meantime, you are expected to contact a conveyancer as well. Again, the buyer's agent can help you with that because you would want to go with a conveyancer that knows, you know, the area as well. So my property was purchased in Tasmania. So I obviously had a conveyancer that was located in Tasmania as well. So the conveyancer's job is to mainly, you know, sort of write up the contract, uh, make sure that you're entering a contract and everything is, you know, legally 
really binding at the end of it and there's no sort of you know surprises or any anything um, that the property agent will send you that isn't right they make sure that that is all good to go so just before you've gotten your pre-approval or conditional approval um, it is also recommended to you know place a holding deposit which is usually 0.25% um, of the actual purchase price just to secure the property just so that the vendor doesn't sell the property to anyone else so you know just paying that little deposit fee in the beginning it does avoid you know the vendor from selling it to someone else now once that's all been done then it's time for you to run um, the pest and building tests so you obviously need to get someone that has specialized in this so you need to get a pest control person to go into the property and make sure that you know there's no term Mines, um, that there's nothing actually you know wrong with any pests in the property that could potentially um, affect you or cost you um, some money later down the track to fix so getting that done is very important just because you want to avoid any sort of you know upfront costs um, you know with your potential property and then there's the building report which needs to be done which is a very comprehensive report that is undertaken by a building inspector again this is outsourced to someone that knows how to do this and they would go in and look at the property every single sort of you know angle and nook and cranny of the property and take photos and compile that in a report for you to let you know whether there's any major defects cracks any mold and if the structure is still you know okay um, basically give you a condition report as to you know what the property is actually like so these two are very important before you do go ahead and purchase and you know settle on your property because you want to know whether it's in good condition and you know there's not going to be any sort of major upfront costs which will come up and you just want to make sure that it's a sound property so yeah those two are very very important now your conditional approval is based on the fact that these pest and building reports come back clean. If they don't come back clean, then you obviously get your deposit back and you don't need to go ahead with the property. Now, if there's no issues with any of the building and pest reports, then you can go ahead and go to your bank and let them know that you are happy to go ahead with all of this and then they can go ahead and provide you with the unconditional approval. Given they've done all of the assessments, checked your serviceability, etc. cetera, um, this is usually done on the conditional approval um, and the unconditional is just a little bit more sort of a comprehensive check just to make sure everything is actually um, up to date and you know they'll ask for your pay slips um, they'll ask for you know your savings your credit cards any sort of expenses that you've got in a bit more um, further detail than the conditional approval so unconditional approval basically means that the lender has actually formally taken the time to you know um, assess all of the paperwork that you've provided and you know you've signed all of your loan application stuff and they've decided to offer you a home loan based on you know the property or the house that you've chosen to buy now once this is all been confirmed and everything is smooth then it's just a matter of waiting until settlement occurs so settlement is when you know the remainder of the 10% deposit is required to be paid um, and this is when that occurs and then your you know your loan is an initiated at this point and the property is essentially yours on that day now to get up to the settlement process it usually takes up to four weeks after you know the unconditional approval um, just because the bank needs to get everything all their paperwork in order the conveyancer needs to be on board the property agent um, or the vendor also needs to be on board and then those three are communicating between each other to make sure everything is set and agreed and settlement actually takes place um, at the at the designated time now that's a little bit about the property purchasing um, process here in New South Wales. Um, it is pretty straightforward, but there are you know some times where there's a lot of back and forth. Say the pest and building um, reports don't come back clean. You may also want to know you know if there is some issue in that report. You know what what. What does it look like to get that sort of fixed? Um, what's the cost involved? And then you may need to get some quotes um, and then that can take some while as well. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of sort of admin paperwork required in between that needs to be completed by the conveyancer, yourself, and then the property manager. Um, so yeah, there's a few things going on, but that's essentially what the process is like. And that's the process that I went through. So for my first investment property, yes, I did. I'm actually in the process of purchasing my second one. Um, I do have settlement 
installment occurring at the end of this week. So um, yeah, really excited for that one, but I'll do another video on that one because that one was a little bit more complicated. Um, but my first property, because this is what this video is about, my first property experience was very seamless, very straightforward, um, and it, it just went really, really smoothly. And in fact, I've actually done a revaluation on that. And thanks to my buyer's agent, my property has actually increased over that period. So I bought it in February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Oh my God, it's been nine months since I've already got it. Um, but I had done this um, valuation in, I believe July or August. And by that time it had actually already gone up by 30K, which was insane. So yeah, that's super fortunate. And I'm super thankful to have my buyer's agent on my side to have done that research for me and to really find me a property that was going to grow. And um, what I've done actually for my second property um, investment that I'm purchasing, um, I've actually extracted the equity from that and I've used um, some of the funds from there to purchase my second one. So I don't need to put too much out of pocket um, to purchase that second one. But I will talk about that process and that second property purchasing experience in another video. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you definitely wanna see that. I'm more than happy to do that for you. Now, as promised I wanted to take you through the actual costings of my property purchase and really let you guys know you know how much I spent and all the costs that were involved so I had purchased a property for 237k in Tasmania um, and the rent at the time was for $260 but now that's actually gone up to $280 per week um, which is awesome. So the deposit that I had to put in was 10%, um, which was $23,700. Um, that's the cash that I had, that was 10%. Um, and now the LMI is also what you are usually required to pay if it's below 20%. I didn't have 20% saved up, but I wanted to go ahead with 10%. So um, generally you would need to pay LMI, but in this case I was um, waived the LMI because I work at a bank um, as many mentioned and then I had to pay stamp duty. So here's stamp duty, um, depending on the state that you're in, it's different. So here it was $7,415. Um, and then my conveyancing costs were about $886 to get all the contract stuff done. Um, and then the building and pest reports were for $520. Um, and then the total cost for that came to about $32,521. So this was the total amount of cash that I needed to have before actually purchasing my investment property. Now, if you do require to get a buyer's agent as well, then obviously you need to factor in that cost as well. And that's the amount of money that I needed to save up um, to be able to purchase a property around the 237K mark. But this obviously can vary, you know, depending on your savings and you know what you've been approved for. So I was obviously approved for a higher amount, but I just chose to purchase something that was um, a cheaper option because I didn't have much cash savings on me and the fact that I wanted to enter ASAP and not wait for that you know 20% as well is the reason why it's so low but you'll be surprised because I bought you know interstate um, the prices do vary now I just wanted to share with you a few of the learnings um, that I had with my experience and I feel like a lot of you guys can gain benefit from as well first and foremost I think if you're purchasing a property and you are like me and you have no interest in you know doing the research then get someone that knows their stuff because I think this is so important. This is something that I think you should definitely invest in. Um, I will leave my buyer's agent link in the description box below, so be sure to check it out. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to purchase a property, I think this is very important. Um, you don't wanna you know, make a mistake and do the wrong research. This takes time and effort. And honestly, who has that time these days? So um, yeah, if you're like me, then you know, reach out to the buyer's agent. I'll leave all the details in the description box. Another learning that I wanted to share with you is to never have too much of savings sitting in your account. I know it's important to have an emergency fund, which I'm saying is definitely something you should do. I'm not saying, you know, that's not the right thing, but have an emergency fund. But once you've got enough there that you feel like you would be comfortable in if anything ever happened, then I think the remainder of the money that you've got, I think is very important to invest that. That could be property investments, that could be, you know, trading, cryptocurrency, anything at all. But I think that money should not just sit there in a bank because you're really not getting the best return 
return and the best value for your money. It's not really working for you hard enough. So I think, you know, look into that and make sure that you are investing your money because you're honestly missing out on that passive income. And this is a little tip that I actually got from my buyer's agent from his YouTube channel, Search Property TV. So he's really big on making sure that you leverage your debt to have assets under your name. So what I mean by that is you shouldn't actually be so fixated on paying off your loan. This will obviously happen over time, but what you should do is to take out that equity, leverage it and use it to purchase another property. Essentially, you know, you should leverage that debt because it's free money and you're basically just using the funds of the bank to purchase another property for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is something that I learned from my buyer's agent. But yeah, those are a few of the learnings that I wanted to share with you. Um, I really hope you guys found this informative, helpful. Um, and if you've got any questions at all, then definitely leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys enjoy these finance related videos. I'll be more than happy to do more of this and provide you with more insight, more intel into you know the money side of things. But if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about my second investment property purchase, then hit the thumbs up button and I'll be more than happy to make that video for you guys. And if you haven't already, then please do follow me on my Instagram page, Success by Sanjana. Um, everything is linked down below. And yeah, I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks guys.